And welcome back. My final guest is Clarkstown Councilman Frank Borelli. Welcome, Frank. Thanks for having me, George. So, Frank, delighted. Uh, you know, you and I have worked together for a long period of time, um, but um, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about your service on the board, some, you know, what's new, some of the things that uh, we're working on, some of the things that, um, some of the initiatives that are important to you. So we're going to delve into that. But for the benefit of our viewers, uh, why don't you, uh, again, just give them a little bit of a uh, thumbnail sketch about your background, what brought you into public service, uh, where you are born and raised, all that. Sure, happy, happy to do that. Um, well, I was born in Brooklyn, New York, but uh, I've been living in Rockland County, and in fact, New City, pretty much my whole life. We've moved up here right before kindergarten, started in Wood Glen Elementary School, and went through all the public schools, so I'm almost a native, almost. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm 55 years old, I'm getting to say I've been here 50 plus years, so I think I can say mm -hmm. that with a straight face. But uh, my background, I, I started out as an insurance broker. Uh, that's con still my career. Uh, I enjoy doing that because I, I get to meet a lot of people, learn about their businesses, learn about how, what, and what makes them work and what doesn't work, and understand that they have a responsibility to their customers and their clients. And I think that's what led me into public service because mm -hmm. as a uh, elected official working in the government, didn't always do that. I think we have a responsibility to our customer, and that's the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. And what I'm proud of and what we've done together over the years is we've worked hard to make sure we protect the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. And I want to continue to do that. And, and we find many ways to do that, and that may be just be consolidation, cutting costs, but whatever it is. Um, and when I first got involved in not-for-profits and different organizations, like, you know, everybody was struggling with a way to do more with less. And again, that continues right into our, mm -hmm. the public service that I've chosen and, and I enjoy and I want to continue to do. So, and um, you've been on the town board for how long now? Uh, 10 years. 10 years. So, um, but pretty fast. Yeah, very fast. And it's amazing when you, you turn around, you're the fresh, you know, fresh new face on the council. Uh, and now 10 years later, you're the, the grizzled veteran, you're the, the, <laughs> the, the longest service, a deputy supervisor, you know, as well. So, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what's changed? Um, for you in that service. I mean, it's um, it's a very, um, we have a different form of government now. Um, the ward system. Uh, the sure. ward system as well. But um, what was it like when you first got on the council and what is it like now? Well, I think the biggest the biggest difference is in the, big, in the early years you're on a, on a board like this, you, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to understand. There's a lot of moving parts. You, you know, after a number of years getting, being on the board and interacting with the various departments, the various um, other municipalities, the citizens, citizen groups, y you learn the dynamics and how things work and how to get things done. So that, that's probably the best thing in terms of a, ten, a long tenure of time. But what's different now is, as, we, as you mentioned, we have a ward system um, and we have new board members. This is the first time I've been on a board where, you know, there's three people that are effectively brand new. And actually, I think that was a good. I think it's a good thing because mm -hmm. uh, what's very different is we have three active board members. No, actually, four because I'm the fourth. Uh, all interested in, in, in what's going on. I, I can't tell you when I go into the council chambers during the week or you know at night. Any time that I ever would see more than one other member of the board there, mm -hmm. I've been in there and there's three people or four all of a sudden the three. And it's, it's, it's amazing that, that this board is so engaged in what we're doing. And I think that's, that's the leadership that you set out, George. Uh, two years ago, or a little bit over two years ago, when you got elected as supervisor, the things that we're doing, we're looking at the tax. We reduced taxes. We never did that before. Right. You know, I was on the board for eight years before that. It was always about how much more money can we borrow. Mm -hmm. And you set the tone, and, and that was with you and I together as councilmen, putting the, the old board uh, on notice that, look, we can't keep spending. We've got to cut that credit card, if you will, for the town. We've got to find ways to reduce our debt. And, and guess what? We've done just that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that is so critical. There's so many issues in this town, but it starts there. If you can't afford to live here, the other things don't matter. No, completely and, agree. And you know what? By, by doing that in the beginning, that now, this board is behind that, every one of them, not, not Republican and Democrat. It's not about party affiliation. And I think every member of this board is dedicated and will be dedicated to do that. At least I hope. We'll find out next week at our workshop because yeah, yeah. we have our uh, workshop yeah. on the uh, yeah. capital projects that are coming up. But, uh, but I think that is the case. And we have good people and they're interested and they want to be part of it. They're not just showing up once a month for the town board meeting. They're here for other things and engaged in what we're trying to do. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and um, you know, in some of the initiatives that you talked about, I'm very proud of the fact that we're the only the only municipality that's cut taxes. And we, uh, my first two years as supervisor with with uh, with your help because um, you're the only one that's on the board that was part of that 
uh, we were able to cut taxes and extend services. I mean, we cut taxes and we expanded uh, uh, the pools. Um, uh, we opened the pool, you know, Congress pool up on Memorial Day weekend uh, now, and it stays open on on, on weekends. Uh, we were able to uh, continue with our capital projects, lower our, the amount of money that we're borrowing, cut taxes, and extend services and meet, meet our needs. And I'm very proud of that. So we did that our first year. And second year, uh, we held taxes flat. In fact, uh, the commercial taxes are actually experiencing, a, uh, the commercial base are actually experiencing a small tax reduction this year uh, as a result of uh, the budget that we implemented. And homeowners are flat. Uh, and so uh, that's, that's unheard of. We've had two consecutive years. I know for the, uh, you were on the board for eight years. I was on the board for seven. Uh, before I became supervisor, and in that time frame, we never had a situation uh, where where we ever cut taxes. And pretty much, it was we had some years where uh, we would, the goal was always let's just get under the cap, or just you know as close to the cap. And before there was a cap, it's you know what what can we kind of get away with? And our borrowing uh, just continued to go up. We did a lot of capital projects, but uh, there really wasn't the foresight to say, okay, what should we be at? And we uh, we went uh, in a 10-year period. The, the town of Clarkstown went from about uh, $55 million in bonded debt to $125 million in bonded debt. And we did some significant projects, but we put a lot on the credit card. So, um, you know, with the philosophy that's been adopted, we're moving away from that. Um, let's talk about some of the... Um, um, some of the other initiatives now that you're kind of delving into. I know I've tasked you with a number of things, and you've brought a, a few things to the table. One of the issues that we've applied for and received a grant from the state that we're moving on uh, to study the consolidation of purchasing with the county. Maybe you could speak to that as sure. well. Sure. Uh, you know, like, like everything we talk about, is that in order to reduce taxes without reducing services, we have to find ways to do things more efficiently, and that's exactly it. Working with the county, I attended a meeting yesterday with other municipalities. We're looking at ways that we can do one bid. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can kind of piggyback on how those those pricing uh, uh, initiatives are set up, and we can get uh, favorable pricing. It just makes sense. It, we're too redundant. You know, mm -hmm. every town doesn't have to have the same department doing the same function. If there's a way to get better pricing, reduce some staff through attrition and find ways to do things better that that's the way that's what it's all about and it's, it's almost common sense mm -hmm. you know you know you know every police uniform uh, why do we have to have 10 different uh bids going out why not just have one you know, again it's gonna be hard to get every group to agree that they want the same uniform company but it's it, it it's common it really is common sense mm -hmm. uh we're too many different uh, entities doing exactly the same thing and spending more money than we need to and again this government, you know, we're not going to be able to uh, keep it going the way we are now with all the other increases that are coming along. We have to do things smarter, and, and that, that's just simply the way it's done. Like, that's my business background is every year you find a, a new way to try to reduce your expenses because you can't raise your prices on your customers. Right. Right. But in government, what happens? They just, you know, us, other elected officials, not us, yeah, yeah. raise taxes. But mm -hmm. we're not willing to do that. Or not until it's the last recourse. That's it. Right. Last, last thing. No, agreed, agreed. And, and um, some of the other things that we're uh, kind of working on, you know, obviously, uh, since I became supervisor, we're continuing the tradition here. We haven't had it in a number of years, but uh, with acquiring vacant properties and open space. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've actually uh, been a part of, and you've been a part of, uh, since I've been supervisor, three property acquisitions. Um, the uh, Marydell property, uh, we're Nyack, able, up in sure. Nyack, we're able to bring 30 acres and put it back uh, 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 preserve it as part of a, a, a group um, with and merge it into the state parkland uh, over on Mountain View uh, to expand the Mountain View Nature Preserve and mm -hmm. uh, now Rockton Country Day School and with that property. Sure. Maybe you could speak to um, um, your vision of that and, and what you think we need to be doing with that going forward. Sure. Well, Rockland Country Day School, 20 plus acres uh, right in the heart of uh, Congress between Congress and New City great opportunity for us. I uh, wanted to preserve the property, but more importantly, there's a number of things that we've talked about doing, and now we have a spot to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, everywhere you go, somebody's saying, we don't have enough fields. I want to play field hockey or lacrosse or mm -hmm. softball or baseball. There's never enough fields. And here we have a property now. We can make that into fields. We mm -hmm. can actually meet that demand and, and do it in, 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 a, in a strong way. Um, senior housing. I know you and I have talked about this a number of times, expanding Middlewood, finding another property that makes sense. Again, it's close to town. It's a good parcel to do that on. 
Mm -hmm. That's something I know we're going to pursue. Uh, the other thing is maybe some kind of public-private partnership. You know, government doesn't have to keep on setting things up. Maybe we could find a way to build a, uh, an indoor, uh, you know, a dome where you could have a, a, a turf field. So in the wintertime, teams that uh, are in the area have a place to go. But we do it with a private business. We do mm -hmm. it with somebody. They put up the money. We put up the property. And that way, you know, there's a you know, mutual benefit. Our taxpayer, our citizens get use of the property on, for certain periods of time and they pay us rent, it's mm -hmm. a win-win. Right. Those are the kind of things that creates those kind of opportunities. Um, you know, other open space, yeah, I'd like us to purchase some property in North New City. Mm -hmm. There's some parcels there that I'm concerned about with overdevelopment. I think we need to find other areas to do it too. I think that's, that was the right spot to start. Mm -hmm. There are other locations around town, whether it be in Nanuet, I know of one, mm -hmm. for example, as well. But I don't want New City to get forgotten. I know right. there's some pieces there. And there's a lot of concerns with um, uh, drainage. In fact, uh, in terms of initiatives, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had uh, spoken with our town planner and our town mm -hmm. engineer about two, three weeks ago by email, memo, and also in person that we have a drainage problem. Mm -hmm. And the people that live in North New City know it, uh, mm -hmm. in particular around the New City condominiums, right. where the New City library is, uh, just north of that. And those folks there, every time it rains, they're concerned. Mm -hmm. And every time they see a new project that's getting proposed, they're like, it's going to be right. in my basement. And we, we can't have that. And I asked, uh, and I think you saw the note, to let's look at a way we can maybe find some kind of drainage project for that area so we don't have to be concerned. Mm -hmm. I also don't believe that right now our projects, we have to have a zero net runoff, meaning you can't create any more water off your property when the development is done. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in floodplains and areas where we have a concern, that number should be, should be forced to reduction, reduce it. Right. Should be a reduction mm -hmm. of maybe 5%. Whatever is reasonable. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're going to work out the, the pieces of. But again, that's the only way to tackle this. Right. And um, you know, those are the kind of things that I think we need to do for our citizens that are here, and we need to protect them you know, while, we're, while we're lowering their taxes. Right, no, absolutely, absolutely. And then, um, of course, I know in, in the minute, a couple of minutes that we have left, um, there's a lot that we could, we could talk about. And you're well-versed, obviously, as the senior council person, and you have a, a lot of key liaison appointments, and I'm grateful for your ongoing service. But, um, uh, there is a project that uh, uh, the town board passed a resolution in opposition to, uh, and I know it's within your ward. Same so, building, sure. Yeah, uh, so same building. We're asking folks to maybe you could speak to that. Yeah. And then thank you. And um, and maybe after that we could also then talk about the ONR substation. Too. Sure. Uh, same the same building. I, I don't understand what the legislature is thinking about. Ed Day is one million percent correct on this. He found a purchaser for the same building. Uh, they're ready to go, and the, the legislature doesn't want to sell it. I don't want to get into their politics and what their arguments are, but let me tell you what it means for, the, for our residents of Clarkstown, and, and, and you know it well. There's 500000 or so in taxes that would be generated, because right now mm -hmm. it's a county property. That means it's not on the tax roll in Clarkstown. We receive zero. Mm -hmm. If we could have that property go, it's a, an assisted living facility, I believe, is the mm -hmm. potential uh, buyer. It's upwards of almost a half a million dollars in tax revenue. That's between the school district and the town. It's not all for mm -hmm. the town. But again, that affects the people in New City and the people in the Clarkstown School District prime more so than others, but the town would still get additional revenue it doesn't have. Mm -hmm. The other thing is in New City in that area, now you'll have a viable business because right now it's an empty building. Folks that come there, they may go grocery shopping, they buy some pizza on the way home, stop for some coffee, whatever it may be. They'll frequent the merchants along that area. That's only good for business. That means it's good for our tax base. It's a, it's a positive. Mm -hmm. um, have you been by there lately? I mean, most of our, our viewers, yeah. they got yellow tape. It looks like a crime scene. Yeah, it does. You got rust coming down the steps. It's, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. And the people that live in the area and, and frequent that, that street, it, it really it shouldn't be. So we have an opportunity if, if the legislature would finally act on this. And was which I think it's embarrassing that there are legislators from the town of Clarkstown that actually voted against selling it. Right. Um, but we have to push forward. And, we have and, to do and, whatever. And, and the rationale, not to cut you off, but just the rationale that several of those legislators actually put out to justify one of them was we might need it for additional space. Uh, you know, maybe that legislator, um, uh, Legislator Lo Hogan, um, who is primarily uh, represents Orange, Orange Town, Town but, yeah. but has a portion of, of Clarkstown, Legislator Lo Hogan, um, you know, her rationale is we might need it, but, you know, the county hospital is closed. Well, let's, let's point and, that and, out and, to and, our and, viewers. And, yeah, how much, the, the amount of space there is almost endless right. with the hospital being closed, and that's why the same building is now empty. All the folks that were working there moved over to Pomona and to that facility. Right. 
It, 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 makes, it makes no sense. And, and it's, it's really uh, just shocking that legislator Cornell voted against it as well. And um, there, there's just no rationale for it, none but again, whatsoever. We represent the people, the citizens of this town. And if they were doing their job, they'd be doing the same thing, which is for the people of Clarkstown, having that property being sold, the county gets revenue, it helps them with their budget. But the town of Clarkstown, we get the revenue, and our school district does too. Yeah. It, again, it's a no-brainer. I it, agree. It, it's agreed. It's nuts. So, so, so let's let's talk about one other one other uh, issue, and, and at the risk of you know kind of getting too deeply involved in the planning process, mm -hmm. um, Orange and Rockland has proposed a substation right off of uh, Little Tor Road, South Mountain Road. Right. It's been in discussion, and before um, uh, before Orange and Rockland and discussion. With the prior administration going back about 12 years, but um, there's some steadfast community opposition. I know that uh, you have some strong views on this, so maybe you could speak to those. Yeah, sure. Uh, the 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 issue there is it's a substation. It's already there. It exists. But however, they're looking for a major expansion. Um, it's I guess at some point go, it's going to go before our planning board. I, I've had the opportunity to meet with a number of the citizens that live in the neighborhood, some of the activists that are pointing out what what happened there, and some of the information that, that's been presented to me is very troubling, and we're going to wait to see how this pans out. But it, it appears to me is the reason that ONR wants this is to serve other communities outside of Clarkstown. And that, to me, is not, is not acceptable. Uh, to, to, to say that they need this to serve Clarkstown, uh, to me, is not logical. The, the number of uh, homes that have been built in the last 10 years in Clarkstown are, are pretty small. Uh, in that area, even smaller, mm -hmm. and you know, you know, well, your initiative with the LED lighting and all the things that we're doing, and every time you buy a new appliance, it's more efficient than your last one. Right. So, and you know, drive down a street, and how many houses have a solar panel on the roof? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if anything, I would almost think that the footprint is smaller, not larger, in, in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But to to have that kind of expansion and have to have our residents have to deal with it and and with potential uh, environmental concerns, health concerns. I'm very concerned about that area, and I I'm, not, uh, I'm not in favor of it at all, f especially for the reasons why they're trying to do it. Mm -hmm. Build it, if you want to do it, well, you say the word, in Ramapo, if you're Ramapo, build it in Ramapo, don't build it here. Right. You want to keep what's there already? Yeah, you, you've been there, but mm -hmm. we don't need to expand it. And what they're looking to do, I think, would be, uh, it's very aggressive. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, I agree, and, and I know we, we passed a resolution last year, and, and uh, both you and I have been uh, talking with the residents of the town, in particular the residents in that area that, that have uh, been raising some concerns about the potential environmental impacts. And it's it's a situation that will play out over time over the over the coming uh, coming months. But um, it, it's definitely a concern. Well, I think that's kind of the we're about out of time for this segment. Uh, went quickly, yep. just like the last 10 years have gone quickly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I do want to thank you uh, uh, not only for your service to our town, but for your friendship and, and our partnership together. Uh, together we've been able to accomplish an awful lot of things, um, you know, these last number of years. And we've got a lot more to do. Uh, and, you know, we're going to continue to be fiscally responsible uh, and pursue some of these new initiatives that uh, are really going to help uh, uh, the future of Clarkstown going forward. Well, good. Well, thank you for having me again. I'd like to thank my uh, my family for supporting me because without them, I couldn't do this, and my many friends in the community that are always have my back because they know we're because they know we we all mm -hmm. of us are doing the right thing, and they want us to continue to do that. And I hope I can. Right. Thank you. Uh, just your contact info. I, I should have mentioned that. So if you could just give your contact info for, if anybody wants to get in touch. Sure. With you. It's um, my email address here at town is f dot Borelli at clarkstown dot org. Uh, our, my direct number with our council chambers is uh, 845, of course, 639-2056. Uh, or go to the town website, Google Town of Clarkstown, and, and my information is right there as well. And uh, I'm always happy to get back to our, our residents and any needs or any concerns they have, wherever they are in town. We may have a ward system now. I'm still a councilman for the whole town, and, you know, we have to be a little more responsive to our individual neighborhoods, but... You know, I, I go out all the time in different areas, and I want to continue to do that. Great. And also, folks can get you on Facebook as well. Great. Absolutely. I'm at, at Frank Borelli on mm -hmm. Facebook. Great. Well, Frank, thanks again. Thanks for being such a great guest. Good. Thank you. And we'll be right back.